creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living Today. We're going to learn how to make some crazy cool projects using duct tape and we'll talk about hummingbirds. One of my guests today is Marissa Puelco and she's a designer and crafter and she's written a craft book on projects made from duct tape. Marissa will show some crazy cool ideas for making everything from jewelry, fashions, hair accessories, handbags and much more. Marissa's company is Modern Surrealist and she lives in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. Another guest is Ray Pauley, and he's a retired curator with the Chicago Zoological Parks, and one of the species he managed was hummingbirds. He's going to talk about the various species of hummingbirds, talk about feeding them, and share the recipe he uses for attracting these tiny birds. Ray lives in Hondo, New Mexico. Ray, it's such a pleasure to meet you and to have you come and, and be on the show today. I thoroughly enjoyed reading the background material that you sent about your life and all the wonderful and exciting things you've done. But I thought we'd start with just when you were a curator uh, mm -hmm. in Chicago and you worked with hummingbirds. Yes, How did that, uh, that come was about? a part uh -huh. of what I did, but yes. Uh, the hummingbirds uh, were involved in a new exhibit that was uh, prepared at the time, and it was a uh, a first of its kind at that time where the hummingbirds and the public could kind of uh, circulate together. Hummingbirds work quite well for that because they're virtually fearless. Oh. And so uh, it worked quite well and then I had to work out management plans for each of the species that mm -hmm. we had. And fortunately we even had some breeding of a couple of, of types. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, just like any other species a person worked with, they were very exciting. I guess so, and they're, but they're so tiny. Yes. I read that somewhere that some of them weigh no more than like two or three paper clips. Exactly. Uh, they're a uh, figure about a five or six gram little bird. Uh, five or six paper clips gives an idea of how heavy they are. <laughs> and you never see a hummingbird very big, otherwise they'd have to walk. <laughs> and uh, they much prefer yeah. to fly. Uh -huh. So. Uh, that kind of weight enables them to get up off the ground along with a very, very rapid uh, metabolism. Uh -huh. Their heartbeat is And And it just seems like they flutter their wings so fast, really you don't even see it. That's right. Uh -huh. It uh, takes a pretty fast camera to stop their wings uh, because the speed of the wings, as small as they are, are enough to enable the bird to not only fly wherever it wants to go, but they're the only birds in the world that can actually fly backwards. Uh, they can hover perfectly still as though they are sitting on an invisible perch. Uh -huh. So with that kind of wing beat, um, they're quite uh, quite capable in meeting challenges like wind, uh -huh. breeze, whatever. Well, and, and I noticed you said they can go up, down, left, or right. And so yes. they're the only species that can do that? They're the only birds that can do that, right. Wow. There's uh -huh. some little birds in Africa, sunbirds, they kind of come close, but they don't quite make it. Don't quite make it. <laughs> well, of course, I think we've all hoped that, uh, you know, we would attract hummingbirds in our backyard. I have some plants that have red buds on them, and yes. so I, I tend to see the hummingbirds come at certain times of the year. But are they really uh, in in certain parts of the country only at certain seasons? Or yes, you, oh, they okay. are migratory. They're essentially tropical. They pretty well have to be because they need nectar much like a car needs gasoline. The nectar uh -huh. does not have any uh, nutritional value to it, but oh. it powers them. And they are basically insect eaters, little oh. tiny insects like gnats and things like that. Uh, and they so eat that's large where they get their nutrition. It. It's not that sugar water that Correct. we're going to talk about. Now, I take a step uh, in that direction. Uh -huh. When we had these birds in captivity, we had to provide virtually all of their nutrition in the uh, sugar water that we uh -huh. gave them, egg yolk, things like oh. that. But that kind of um, um, food material spoils rapidly outside. Oh, sure. So uh -huh. we don't use mm -hmm. egg yolk for outdoor uh, feeders, uh -huh. just the uh, sugar water. But and is it better to have the feeders in the shade or in the bright sun? It really doesn't matter too much because as long as it's sugar, and I do add blackstrap molasses, a small amount of it, uh, for a little bit of nutrition. You shouldn't oh. get any spoilage at all then. Mm -hmm. And you say it's important to start out with hot water. 
and, and mix the sugar. You're making a sugar syrup, aren't right. you? Right. We're making a kind of a sugar syrup, except it's very watery. Oh. It doesn't matter too much uh, the strength of the uh, sugar in the water. Oh. I choose to use in a two and a half uh, quart container three cups of sugar, which is more than most people use. But the reason for that is a sip of this sugar water with that strength of sugar, uh -huh. they get more carrying power. They can go further, further. from the uh, feeder and visit more flowers Before than if it's a weaker. having to come back. Oh, right. I see. Uh -huh. Otherwise, if it's two cups of sugar, maybe they can only go just uh, uh, two-thirds of the distance. Uh -huh. Well, now, I thought it had to be red. I thought the sugar water, you had to put red food coloring in it. Most people do, and you do not have to, in fact, oh. Uh, I, we, we get just as much mileage out of using uh, clear sugar water. Oh. Uh, so, and you can mix it yourself. They are very forgiving about uh, the kind of sugar and the amount of it and so on. They're but kind you of like do a, use granulated, not like powdered or right. brown sugar or something. Granulated sugar works uh -huh. fine. In back your to either kind. Uh -huh. and, the, uh, and I use blackstrap molasses huh. because it goes the furthest. Huh. And I use a tablespoon for... Uh, each uh, two and a half. And quarts. these are different feeders. What is there one that you prefer over the other? Well, I look, go by the birds. They have to tell me which feeder they like the best. <laughs> this seems to be the best because the birds line up. Maybe don't line up. The, but each of these little bunch, flower centers is where the bird will will get the nourishment. That's where they'll dip their beak. That's uh -huh. right. And they tend to be argumentative. Uh, although, uh, after a generation or two, they, um, they seem to be a little more forgiving. I've seen as many as two hummingbirds at one feeder taking turns, turns. dipping, which is really unusual. I've never seen, well, I don't think the, I've seen that. Right. But I noticed on this one you have some white yes. and, and, a, and new holes. Now, what's the purpose of that? If I don't give the Orioles an opportunity to get some sugar water, they go nuts. They won't even let the hummingbirds nearby. Do they fight nearby. the hummingbirds? Kind well, of they, fight they for a boss, chance to... they, they get excited and just kind <laughs> of take over. Oh. And the hummingbirds kind of stay back a bit. Uh -huh. So what I do is drill a hole, about a quarter inch hole, big enough that they can get their beak into it. Here. And then to set it aside, I use a white out <laughs> to paint a circle around or it. So the paint Orioles, or anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Well, that's anything interesting. Anything to uh, give the Oriole a cue as to where that uh -huh. opening is. And then that keeps piece in the family a little better than otherwise. <laughs> family of birds, I see. Right. And this is just a smaller version? This is a smaller version, but I use this for water. Oh, just uh, straight water? Straight old water. Uh -huh. They don't use it very often, but especially if you are in a dry area or a drought or anything uh -huh. like that, uh, they do use, uh, they will come and, and dip a few uh, drinks of water out of that. here. Uh -huh. Most people don't bother doing this, but... Um, I find if you they're found, given a chance, uh -huh. they uh, they do like it. And of course, the ones we kept in the captivity, this was their source of water, basically. Uh -huh. And you do, is it a good idea to wash this container periodically, or should you leave whatever residues in there? I uh, rinse them with hot water <clears throat> uh, with a, at least three rinses to get as much of the uh, residue out. Do you use soap? Or no, soap? and no. that's a very good point. Uh, the, if we ever use soap, it would be in the fall of the year. I've never had to use soap during the uh, summer. Uh -huh. Soap will tend to interfere with that little tiny gastrointestinal tract. And oh. the last thing a so hummingbird needs is to them. have the runs in, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. in a little tiny critter like that. Uh -huh. So I don't use the soap for that. But if I do use soap, I rinse it with hot water Thoroughly. three or four times uh -huh. to be sure that there's no soap left in it. Mm -hmm. And I'd ask you what this was earlier. You said this is a mister. Is that yes. recommended? And well, I haven't tried it yet. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> just between you and You're I. You're going to put it like <laughs> close to one of the feeders, or what? Not really. I'll set it nearby, but it will be uh, up a little, uh, uh, maybe say six feet off of the ground uh, or above the uh, floor mm -hmm. outside and then it will kick out a little mist. Now what I do find is that after having a day of uh, dipping their beak into these um, openings here, mm -hmm. sometimes their beak gets a little bit clogged with uh, sugar, sugar water. Uh -huh. When they preen themselves at night, over a period of time they tend to coagulate their feathers. 
or oh. their feathers get a little coated. <laughs> so with a the mist, they can fly through there, take a quick shower, uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> and they don't have that problem then. <clears throat> That's amazing. And I've always wondered, how do they know to come back to the same, well, I don't know that they're the same hummingbirds, I shouldn't say that, but do they tend to come back to the same places? Very definitely. Their brain is exceptionally tiny, and yet it's packed with all kinds of uh, instinctive information. Mm -hmm. And one of those instinctive uh, components has to do with where did they get their meal last year. And wow. uh, I know I haven't banded any. Uh, that's, that's a whole different mm -hmm. uh, issue. But the way the birds treat me when they come back, which is no respect. They come <laughs> to the window. I see them at the windows, and they insist that I come out and feed them. Uh -huh. <laughs> and a new hummingbird is going to be more cautious. Oh, I see. But and you said uh, in the material <laughs> I read that if we ever find one that may, I guess would have nosedived into a window and it's laying there unconscious, you said to pick it up by the beak? By the beak. That's the safest place oh. to pick them up. Right. For our safety. Their is, safety. Oh, for their safety. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so I pick them up by the beak, set them in my hand, and uh, I'll transfer them to something elevated like a tabletop like, outside. So cat or other animals can't get exactly. them, is that it? Oh, and uh -huh. then it gives them, yes, it gives them a chance to recover uh, from, uh, uh, in the event that that's going mm -hmm. to work out, uh, it gives them a chance to recover without getting devoured. Uh -huh. without being You mentioned meal. about that you haven't banded any. What if it has a band on it? Uh, you have to get a, if you find a dead um, hummingbird, uh -huh. and I did find one time a uh, hummingbird that had hit, collided or something uh -huh. and died. They, uh, I check the legs and if there's a little tiny band, uh -huh. uh, we take it off and with a strong uh, magnifying glass, there's gonna be a phone number or an address oh, really? and a number where you send the information to that resource and they will send information back to you telling you where that bird was banded. Oh, I see. And the one that I had that ban was banded was actually banded in uh, Louisiana, huh. so uh, it had they, made its uh, trek to to New Mexico. Yes. Well, and there's lots of interesting books. I had the pleasure of having a guest on years ago who had written a book, Dan True, uh -huh. and really, I just think hummingbirds are fascinating. I do too. I can I've tell you do too. Never been able to outgrow them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked you why you brought a broom with you, and you said that's to shoo hummingbirds out if they happen yes. to be in an area you don't want them. It if a hummingbird, hurt them. you know, a hummingbird can get a little excited, and when I walk outside with one of these to hang it up in the morning, mm -hmm. it may be so eager that it'll come up and start feeding before I've got it hung huh. up. Uh -huh. And if one isn't careful, they might come in your house oh, to feed. So uh -huh. you don't panic. You just carry it outside and the bird should go with you. Uh -huh. If it's a bird that's not as bright as the others, it might wind up staying in the house <laughs> and then the bird panics. Uh -huh. So you close um, the blinds on the windows, keep it kind of dark uh -huh. inside, keep the door open and then with the broom you can kind of herd the hummingbird outside. Without hurting it or scaring it. Right. Uh -huh. Right. Well, Ray, this has just been fascinating. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here today. It's my pleasure. Marissa, thank you so much for being with us. I love when you come because you bring such wonderful, quick and easy projects. And you know just about everything about duct tape, don't you? Yeah, it's uh, something I got into, just a hobby, and I've really um, came up with a lot of really fun techniques and things you can do with it. And we're going to show a lot of those. Uh, this is your latest book that's come out, Fun and Funky Projects for Fashion and Flair. Mm -hmm. and, uh, each time you come, you bring things, and then you leave a lot of your supplies because you, you fly everywhere. I've had more fun making things. I usually copy yours, but sometimes I'm a little creative. But we thought we might start by just showing. This book is divided into sections. Mm -hmm. But what I like, and, and it's a good reminder whether you've done this or not, we, we have steps, step outs to what, what types of things? Yeah, in the beginning of the book, I show you all the basics, how to do a ruffle, a ribbon, how to do a uh, rosette. So those are kind of the foundation uh -huh. building blocks to making all of these fun projects in the book, Crazy Cool Duct Tape Projects. And once you learn the basics, like making pleats, I thought that was the neatest thing, and it's so easy to do. 
the so first, easy. The first chapter's on fashion, mm -hmm. and you have made just about everything that can, including our bracelets, and we're going to show more bracelets in mm -hmm. just a little bit. But this one starts. You've got a little kilt on. Is that yeah, what this is? Yeah, a little is? new spin on the Irish kilt. Uh -huh. uh, it's got a little pocket in there, <laughs> and um, it's really fun. You could do that in any different color or pattern to suit your personal style. Little choker. That's a really easy one. We put it in the beginning of the book just to get you started. Here's those bracelets that we both have on and we'll show show some others in just a little bit too. Yeah, those um, are really fun and easy and those petal points are also one of the foundations that you can use to make other things um, uh -huh. like the topiaries and um, okay. all we'll kinds look of at stuff. Those. This, one, this chapter is called Too Cool for School mm -hmm. and that's what my grandson had so much fun making a lot of the projects and he'd take a roll to school and he and his friends would make you know, various things. So kids really jump at this. Kids love this because it's easy um, and it's, it's a very forgiving craft. So, uh -huh. and, and there's a lot of uh, creative possibilities of things you can do to customize it. And there's so many great patterns to mm -hmm. choose from. I was looking at all the school supplies, pencil holders, uh, cans to, mm -hmm. to put your, you and duct tape will stick to anything won't it? It'll stick to anything <laughs> and uh, and you can unstick it too so it, it makes it really easy to kind of adjust and tweak your projects. And let's see the third chapter is decor mm -hmm. and uh, things for the home, uh, yeah. things to wear, so all kinds of decor. Yeah we've got like a new spin on the old beaded curtain uh -huh. that's made it with these little puffy uh, shapes, so that's really cute. And you don't have to worry about somebody walking into it and breaking it like you do with the ju the ones with jewels. Right, it's very durable and it's easy to clean. You can just wipe it down, little so it's great for kids. Facial mask <laughs> and a little bag. We're gonna show lots of bags in a minute. But uh, anyway, there's just, what is it, 24 different projects yeah, in this book? 24 different original projects mm -hmm. all stepped out, so you can follow them step by step. They're really easy to do, really clear instructions, and there's a chapter on school, uh, fashion, and decor. Can't ask for more. <laughs> so we've looked at the book. Uh, why don't we just, just start here? Uh, you actually have one of these bracelets on, and what we wanted to point out is that they're made with Velcro closure. Yeah. And I've always had trouble with bracelets because I have small wrists, mm -hmm. and the Velcro closure just makes it perfect. Yeah, it's very adjustable, so you know, you can, uh, your friend can borrow it, or you can oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> make it for someone, and you can be sure that it'll fit. <laughs> very cute. Uh, this, people would never guess what this is. <laughs> I would never have guessed, and I'm going to make some for, for some people here at the station. What is this? That is the pocket protector. <laughs> it's a new spin on the old classic, kind of the uh -huh. whole nerd chic. And in the book, I actually also have a coordinating little tape for your glasses that's <laughs> removable with the, the Velcro closures uh -huh. as well. So cute. And this is that <laughs> pleating technique that I was talking about. I like doing that. Yeah, that's it's so easy. It's easy, and you can layer up your pleats so you can add different uh, colors and patterns. Uh -huh. And lots of little bags for either for pencils. What else could they be used for? Uh, those are great for lunch money. I also oh. use them uh, to keep my coupons in my bag, you know, when I'm going shopping, mm -hmm. to get organized, also to keep hold of receipts and stuff like uh -huh. that. And, and they do close with Velcro, so they really are secure. You could put your lunch money, like you mentioned, and change in it. You don't have to worry about it falling out the sides. They are, they are really secure. And there's all, some of the bracelets, uh, there's tons. I picked one that kind of goes with what I have on and you goes did great, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> got to coordinate. You, yeah, you got to <laughs> coordinate. That's it. What about these bigger bags? Oh, these bigger bags are great for um, larger things that you need to keep track of and you can also customize it by adding grommets so uh -huh. you could hang them on the wall. You could do a whole little section to keep your stuff all organized in your room. Uh huh. Those would be good in a bathroom too because oh, yeah. the, the water resistant. Definitely. Good idea. I like this. This is a little keychain. How yeah. easy would this be to make? That's really fun. Great it's gifts. easy. It's with a little foam inside, uh -huh. just like upholstery foam. That's cute. <laughs> okay, let's see. And then we have additional bags. What I really like is the way you, you embellish them. That one has a big flower on the front with the pearl base. That's probably an old earring or a brooch yeah, or something. Yeah, you, you can use your old stuff, mm -hmm. you know, to upcycle and embellish. And another technique in the book that I really like is the layering. I teach you how to make layered stickers. So like oh, that flag uh -huh. and those lips. It's, um, it's a really easy technique and I, and I show you how in the 
foundation chapter. Good. Okay. Uh, we'll lead up here if we want to be really <laughs> cool. <laughs> we could put this on our mirror in the car. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're of the age where you can drive a car, uh, you can uh, put your rearview mirror dice on there, or you could just hang them in your room. How They're just fun. fun. It is. And it, is this a lunchbox? Yeah, this is a lunchbox. It's really easy to do. I made it by layering um, bubble wrap inside so it's actually insulated on the inside that's clever and very can, clever um, customize yeah, show your the, straps. the gloves that's cute oh yeah these are really fun they're uh, <laughs> fingerless gloves kind of like uh -huh. a throwback to the 80s oh how funny <laughs> would have never thought of what that was i thought it was another bag <laughs> yeah yeah they're really cute be great for parties, Halloween parties, or you know, if you're having a '60s or something. Yeah, that would be fun. for sure, it's, it's great. You can you can customize it to your outfit. We also have leg warmers in the book, so you can uh -huh. coordinate your fingerless gloves with your leg warmers. Uh -huh. <laughs> be really cool and show how this is, and that'll also show the Velcro too. Yeah, it's this is one of closure. my favorite uh, pencil pouches, or you can use them as a wallet. But mm -hmm. I did some diagonal layering of the pleats and then I did the rosette pleat blinged mm -hmm. it out of course of course got the velcro Ooh, brand closures. the inside's kind of pretty <laughs> yeah and then got some flames just for that little added element of surprise surprise okay <laughs> that sounds like what you would put together <laughs> well these were kind of tall so we thought we'd save them till last this and I would commented earlier about how this matches yeah <laughs> so I planned that, it that way <laughs> that shows what how many choices you can find in duct tape nowadays yeah these are great little topiaries you can uh -huh. do them for the holidays you could do them just to decorate your room uh -huh. to go with your theme and these are on a base so they come apart you can yeah. even store them it's you a, know, all in built on a piece of styrofoam uh -huh. and they're really durable Oh, I love all the colors. I love all the bling. Yeah, That's they're, really they're pretty. fun. And then so this one I did with a square base mm -hmm. and then a cone on top and a little dowel. And look at the pleats, just like a little piece of furniture yeah. with a pleated skirt. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you like it. I love it. Ice cream cones, buttons. The, yeah. The, and you know, all those scraps that we save all the time. Mm-hmm. Really cute. And then this one is actually my favorite. Oh, wow. It's got that same pedal Two. technique as I used on the bracelets. Uh -huh. And it's got the OMG and the whatever and the fabulous. fabulous. Uh -huh. <laughs> how cute. And I just think that's just so cute. I think I love the color combination of that one a lot. Well, and how easy and inexpensive this would be to redo a teen's room. You know, they like to redo their rooms more often than we can usually afford. Definitely. So if you use duct tape to make some, you could do window shades, uh, toppers for windows. There's just really no limit. No end to what you can do. And it's just so much fun. Well, thanks for finally putting it in a book. I need to refresh my mind too. And I know others will want to. Thank you so much, Marissa. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to work with deco art, chalky paint, We'll visit with an artist who has used her talent to help others going through various illnesses. And finally, we'll learn how to cook with kale. One of my next guests will show some upcycling and distressing techniques featuring deco art chalky finish paints. They go on with just one coat, require no sanding or use of primers, and the finished results are absolutely beautiful. Another guest is an artist, designer, and model, and she's on a mission. Although facing terminal cancer herself, she's found a way of helping other women through her creative artwork. She'll discuss how pain is reflected in each of her paintings and even tell how illness has influenced her modeling career. She's quite an inspiration. What's for lunch, you ask? Well, the answer is kale, but do you know what kale is? Another guest on the next show will tell us what kale is, show some of the different varieties, and explain why it is so good for us. She'll also show how to make kale chips, which are such a popular, healthy snack food now. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer a special booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. We are celebrating our 40th year on PBS. This booklet is titled the 40th Anniversary Series, and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information, and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this commemorative booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. 
Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets we have available online. We would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter too. Go to KENW.org and click on the Sign Up Now button and input your email address. That's all there is to it. We would also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. We look forward to hearing from you.